Oh, oh, look at that. It did it. Is it? Oh, it's not going to do that in time, though. Okay, it's going to be interesting. And yeah, look at that. The car did it. Welcome back everybody to Tesla Driver. I hope you're doing really well. Today we're heading up to Carlisle for our AP UK City Tour. We're sponsored by Dreamcase and if you're doing a long journey like this in a Tesla or in fact in any car, make sure to check out Dreamcase. The advert's in the top left and the link is down below in the description. Go over, get one, support the channel and support our sponsor. It would be awesome. Anyway, we are going into Carlisle, through Carlisle, and then we're going on to the supercharger that's on the other side of Carlisle. I don't know what the name of it is. So we're gonna have a little bit of navigate on autopilot here, and then we're gonna hopefully come in to Carlisle, do a really good run through Carlisle, and then back onto navigate on autopilot afterwards. And hopefully this is gonna be a nice successful journey. Now, I've never been to Carlisle, so I don't know what it's like. I don't know what the roads are gonna be like. I just know it's up north. And and I know that some roads are questionable up north. Now, you can see the car's bugging us to change lanes. It wants us to get into that left lane because that's the lane we need to be in for it to do the junction. So it's taken me about five and a half, six hours to drive up here to Carlisle. And I've actually had a couple of issues with Navigate on autopilot. Not the normal issues though. I would be driving just like this past a junction, which has nothing to do with me. Like I, I wouldn't be going down this junction, for example, and the car would actually indicate right and slightly go onto this lane and then go back, which is really confusing. Uh, okay, so we need to come off here. Let's see if it does it. It should go off here. There we go. And is it going to keep us in lane? Yeah, it's keeping us in lane. And as you can see, it's starting to slow us down and navigate on autopilot has been turned off now. So now it's just back into normal autopilot. That worked really well, actually. That was quite and smooth. All right, I'm gonna have to turn this lady off. And as you can see, it brings you nice and slowly up to a roundabout. And actually it's come to a complete stop. So I'm not accelerating. There's still cars coming. It's come to a complete stop. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't know it did that. So now it actually stops completely for you after navigate on autopilot. That's really interesting. Okay, we're going down here, down the A6. And we've got a cyclist now in front of us. So let's just see what the car deal does with him. Oh my God. See, that accelerates, in my opinion, way too hard and close up to him. Like, it didn't seem to stop quick enough. It was stopping, uh, but only a little bit too late. All right, so this is at uh, 7.45 a.m. So I'm hoping we're gonna miss any big traffic, but we should have a few cars on the road to help us at lights and stuff and stop. A little bit left there. But this looks like one straight, literally one straight road into Carlisle. Then we're gonna go past the Carlisle Castle, of which I think that's where we're gonna have issues. And then we should have one straight road out again. So it should be pretty successful. Okay, obviously I'm gonna have to regulate speed here because the car still doesn't regulate speed beforehand. I'm actually gonna change my autopilot settings to absolute so that it won't go over the speed limit uh, at all. Because I do currently set it so it goes just over the speed limit, I think like two or three miles an hour or five miles an hour on, this, on the motorway. As you can see here, this is nice. This is a nice wide road. There's no cars parked on the road which is good. So some people were asking in the comment section on the last load of videos about the rules in the UK with parking on the road. Basically, if there's not a yellow, uh, double yellow line or a red line or a zigzag on the left of the road, and as long as you're not parking too close to a junction or on the other side of the road from a junction, you can pretty much just abandon your car on the road, like pretty much anywhere. I don't know if you could do it here actually because there's a cycle lane, but I would presume you could. I presume that you would be able to park here and no one would actually tell you off. Actually, there you go. Yeah, there's cars over there on the other side of the road. This guy is coming all the way out, nearly across, but not quite. You can see that these cars here are parked on the cycle lane, which is super annoying for if you're a cyclist. So yeah, clearly uh, you can park on the cycle lane, but I mean, that saves the road. So it's not too bad for me, I guess. This is really nice, actually. I actually really like the kind of open road as well that they have here in Carlisle. I realize when I point and stuff like this, everyone looks at me from the other cars thinking I'm like pointing at them. 
because I know everyone's quite sensitive in their cars. Everyone's very, I don't know. And uh, I think sometimes people think I'm pointing at them and stuff, but obviously I'm not. So we're coming up to our first load of lights here. We've got a cyclist cutting across. Is the car going to see the cyclist? Yeah, it's seen the cyclist. And as you can see, it's still marking him, but he shouldn't be of issue. No, he's pulled off now anyway. And now the car is going behind the Saab, but leaving, again, a little bit too big of a gap for me. How's it gonna do here? It might go a little bit funny here because of the way the lines kind of go very wide. No, I actually did that nicely. These are the zigzags that I meant. So you can't park on zigzags, for example. And there's the yellow lines. You can't park on, well, that's a bus stop, but yeah, you can't park on the yellow lines. Now, I'm not sure what lane we need to be in here. So I'm gonna go in the left lane. Yeah, it is the left lane. It was gonna put us into the right lane because it was obviously just kind of following straight forward. Um, autopilot. Okay, autopilot doesn't want to work. There we go. Okay, this guy's parked on the side of the road, but he is coming out. But as you can see, the car did go around him again. So the car's definitely getting better at going around other vehicles on the road. I think we saw that in the Wales test where the car actually navigated around parked cars, which was good to see. I'm not sure if it was slightly fluke because the road was wide, but still, it was good to see. This straight road into Carlisle, though, is really quite nice for autopilot. It looks like the cars here park on the pavement rather than on the road, which I'm down for. I think that's cool. That's fine if they want to park on the pavement instead. Okay, we're coming up to some lights here. And we want to go straight on, but it might slightly follow this right line. No, it didn't. It went straight forward. It followed the correct line. Look at this. Now, there's like a dull line here, which I think is for the bike lane. Um, I'm not sure, actually, if that's for the bike lane. I'm not sure what that line's for, but it's confusing the car. You can see the car darting left and right. It can't be for the bike lane. I think it's just a, like an old line that was still there. But it made the car go a little bit strange. And here we go. This is going now into the center of Carlisle. So you can see it's getting a little bit busier. There's definitely more people on the road. But if it's just this straight road the whole way in and out, this is going to be great. Okay, I'm gonna have to reset my sat nav just so that we can go through Carlisle. So I'm gonna set it to the supercharger at Gretton Green. Look at it working these really well. That's really nice, nice and smooth. Okay, it actually wants us to turn right here, but I don't want to because I wanna go past the castle or at least like go so I can see the castle because I've not seen it. So whenever I do these AP talk, God, what was that Saab doing in front? Okay, it's gonna be interesting. And yeah, look at that, the car did it. Wow, that was a little bit nervy, but it did it. So yeah, I wanna go past the castle so that we can see it. When we do the AP tours, I genuinely do go to the city uh, and look around the city. Like I do get out and go have a look around. Sadly, I can't in Carlisle because I've got to go to Newcastle to film. It's like, I love actually going around and seeing all the cities. So I hope you guys get to see a little bit of the extra of the UK and you can like pick what cities you wanna have a look at. It, everything's in lockdown by the looks of it here though. I guess it is only 8 a.m. Okay, luckily all the lights are in our favor so far. The lines disappear for a second there, but they do get picked up afterwards. Again, we've got all green lights, which is great. Okay, so we've got a couple of junctions coming up now, which obviously I am going to have to take control for. But I'm going to obviously keep on letting autopilot do as much as it wants to. If this go, I'm just going to let it follow wherever it wants to go here. I think it's going to go in the right-hand lane. 
No, it's got it's going into the left lane. Okay, we've, we're going into the left lane. And there's the castle. All right, is this the castle? I don't know, it looks castle-y. We're going straight on, still on autopilot. Still following this car nicely. This, this is amazing. This is a stunning place. Okay, and I'm going left, apparently. Oh no, I can't go right. Wait, can I go right? Because it's 8 a.m.? I don't, I don't know. Can I go right? I wanted to go right there, but this is going to be taking me left. But I think the bus lane... I'm pretty sure the bus lane opens at 8, if I read that correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go right here. I'm just going to give it a go. I'm sorry if this is wrong and this bus lane is shut. But I need to go this way, so... Oh, okay, there we go. All right, so I just went a little bit of a different route. But this is still obviously the city centre. Actually, there's no one behind me, so what I'm going to do... I'm just going to see what the car does here. Uh, is there people coming behind? Okay, there's people now coming behind me, so I, w I won't let Autopilot do this bit. I was going to let Autopilot do it and see if it kind of went left and followed the car and bus in front. But I don't think it would do. I really like this place, though. Like, the buildings are really pretty. I'm just looking at the map to see if we've gone near the next to the castle. Oh no, the castle's still to come. Okay. All right, what is the car going to do? Let's just give it a second and see. Is it going to follow them? Whoa, that cyclist gave me a little jump. Okay, we're just going to have to uh, follow this and put it on autopilot here. Oh, there we go. So yeah, again, those kind of corners. I'm I'm wanting it to see if it will just follow the car in front at all, but it doesn't seem to follow them enough to go around the corner. Uh, and it then, once it stops, like, deciding to turn, it always seems to decide to just kind of floor it straight on, which is strange. Okay, we're now going into the right lane, which is correct, but the car kind of did it without us noticing. Because over there, apparently, it's just car parks. Oh, this is interesting, okay. This is really nice. So we're taking a left here, so we're gonna be following this Clio in front. And obviously it's not gonna do that turning on its own. And I assume I wanna be in this lane, but I don't know. Okay, so I think the castle is like over here somewhere behind this um, really hideous building. Where, where is it? Apparently it's over there but I, I haven't been able to see it, so I'm a little bit disappointed. I think I've taken maybe a different route to what I initially planned. Okay, so we're coming up to a big laned roundabout. Uh, we've got cars either side of us, so obviously I'm gonna watch out and see what, no, see the car was trying to go down that lane there, and that's not the lane that we go down. We need to stay over to this uh, second lane. There's the castle, just there. Ah, oh, there it is, that looks cool. Okay, autopilot back on. Picking up some speed around the corner. I'm not sure what we've got in front of us, but we've got something on the road. Uh, <laughs> okay, I don't quite know. Okay, I'm just going to go left and go around it. Why is that? That's pretty funny. Okay, let's put that back on. So yeah, obviously we couldn't uh, navigate around them there because the indicators and changing lanes doesn't work, sadly. Uh, so again, I need to be in the right lane. But if I do that, it doesn't do anything, which is a real shame. It still needs to come back. Here we go, pulling up to a red light. Oh, by the way, some people have been commenting, like they comment timestamps and say, look, he jumped a red light. No, most of the time, all I've done is waited at a light for a minute and then I've just tried, decided to cut that out. Um, I probably wouldn't bother cutting out if I did bother to run a red light, but yeah, that's what it is. It's just me normally cutting out boring times of me waiting, but also, who cares? Like, don't worry, you don't have to be the, the snitch policing me while I do my Tesla videos. So it's braking quite hard. It's going a little bit funny here. I think it's because there's cars on the road. Yeah, it's definitely because there's cars on the road. It's kind of doing a little bit of a weird braking, but there's definitely enough space 
for it to go around. And then as you can see, the road widens up quite a lot here. And now this is straight out of Carlisle. So that was actually, that was a drive straight through the center of Carlisle. And that was very, very easy. Like the roads here seem very easy and actually really quite nice. Like no one is parked on the road or at least not many people. And if they are, most people are parked here on the pavements like this anyway. So I'm actually a big fan of how this is currently situated. Okay, so I've got to go around him now because obviously, yeah, I know he's there picking up people. Again, that's something that it's going to need to be able to judge on its own, whether it can go around uh, a bus like that, a bus stop, or, you know, people just pulling over and dropping people off. That all needs to be worked into the system. So what's it going to do here? This is going to be interesting. Is it going to try and get past these cars? Oh, yeah, but way too close. Let's try it again. I think it was just the Mini. Oh my God, no. Yeah, it's it still goes a little bit too close for my liking two parked cars like it needs to really evade them and it needs to be able to put its tire on the line or slightly over the line so it can get past the cars but I don't think it does that just yet you see it's starting to get a little bit busier now but autopilot I think sometimes works better when it's busy with other cars to regulate that's a nice Jag pulling out there. I don't know, maybe people up north kind of think different and don't park their cars on the road. I like it, I do like it. See look, just so you all know, haven't jumped that red light, I was just skipping it so you didn't have to sit in the traffic with me. <laughs> that was all. Okay, it's getting a little bit more like old fashioned -y out here. We've got a car here on the side of the road, which it wasn't going around. It wasn't seeming to like be a problem, but again, it just wasn't evading it or looking to evade it enough. And I, re I want it to be obvious. It needs to do like an almost obvious swing so that it knows that the car's there and it's, it's going around it. Okay, we're going straight on here, so we're staying in this right-hand lane. And the car's a little bit slow to pick up pace, which leaves that kind of gap, which is slightly irritating. This must be the car area of Carlisle, because there's so many car dealerships here. Okay, so we're gonna be coming to a big roundabout now, which is going to put, whoa, what the heck was going on over there? Which is gonna be putting us um, onto the M6. So we're in this right lane, and of course the car's not gonna stop at the red lights. So we're gonna to have to stop ourselves. That's quite handy actually, it put us in this lane, because that's allowed us to get in front of everybody else, which is great. And we can do a little launch up to 30. If this light ever changes, let's see. Ah, yeah, I got 30 there. Oh, just over. And go! Okay. Obviously, I'm not going to let the car do this roundabout because it wouldn't be able to do it. That's not running a red light. It's still amber. Yes. Nailed it. Okay, now we can go. Oh, what? <laughs> Straight into a 50. <laughs> okay, well, it should be on navigate on autopilot, though. Um, so, let's see what this is going to do. This is going to be very interesting because there's roadworks. Oh, oh, look at that. It did it. Is it? Oh, it's not going to do that in time though. See, it wasn't quick enough there, but it actually evaded the first load of cones. That was quite interesting to see. It actually evaded the first load of cones, but yeah, that, that second cone thing, I honestly didn't see until I like was on the road. So that was even kind of a surprise to me. So that would have been a big surprise to the car as well. But as you can see here, Navigate on Autopilot is working and it actually says that it knows that there's cones here so it can see the fact that there is construction going on. Uh, we're gonna go here for the overtake and check the lanes. Yeah, the lane is working nicely. Looks like there's a speed camera set up there on the bridge. 
But these are average speed checked anyway, so I'm not sure why there's a speed camera up there as well. This is working fine. And this is where obviously autopilot is most mostly used and it is pretty successful at this bit, I must say. So we've got about five miles, six miles now of motorway until we get to our charging point. So let's see how we do up this motorway. And we'll try and get a couple of lane changes involved as well. I kind of want to do a couple of on and off ramps, but I'm not sure coming up where the on and off ramps are. Oh, actually I found one. I'm going to do an on and off ramp, okay, in 1.9 miles. So let's see what it asks. Yeah, 1.9 miles, navigate on autopilot is on, and we're gonna be coming off ramp in a minute. So I actually wanna get in that first lane relatively soon. Okay, someone is at my door. And I think I'll do it after this lorry. Yeah, we'll go past this lorry and see. Actually, it's not saying on here that it wants to navigate me off the motorway. So maybe, maybe there's not a junction. See, interesting enough, I'm just looking into my GoPro now, and it looks like there's plenty of space down here to pull in and like get in and then come back out. Because I noticed some people also complain about get into the first lane. In the GoPro, because it's wide angle, when that gap looks big, it's no, it, that no one in their right mind would get into that gap. For example, this gap here in front of us, you might get into, like that's roughly kind of the distance I would consider getting into. Whereas anything smaller than that, there's really no point in getting over. Um, but yeah, on the GoPros, I found that it really does make it look like you can get over a lot earlier and into a lot smaller gaps. But here we go with a little lane change here. As you can see, no problems at all. And hopefully we're going to do another lane change actually in a second to get past this Audi. Lane changes, I, except for a little bit of bad weather earlier this drive and a lane change got aborted, lane changes are normally nine times out of ten successful. Okay, we're coming out of the 50 now and we're going to be going into a 70, so I'm just going to start speeding it up. thing I have also noticed and it's worth keeping an eye out for is to see where it tells me to go in the lanes because obviously navigate on autopilot tells me what lane it thinks I should be in and in my opinion sometimes it, it gets it very wrong so like now why would I change lanes now oh actually there actually is a lorry coming over but there's no way that indicator wasn't on when it said to do that so although that was actually correct you know, do you know what I mean like it there was no reason for it to go over there and if that went over by itself without me confirming, like it can do in America, I think I'd be pretty annoyed and the people behind me would have been annoyed because you kind of change lanes a little bit randomly. So here, for example, let's see how long it takes for us to get back into that first lane. Nice and quick. That's a lot better than it used to be, telling us to get over. And now what about going into that first lane? Is it going to ask us to go into the first lane? It doesn't seem to be, and I think that's because it can obviously see that car over there and it's worried about us getting too close to it. But for my liking, I want to be in this left lane now. There's no point sitting in that left lane. So it needs to just judge a little bit better what lane it should be in. Uh, because it needs to judge, obviously, if people are going to cross over the lanes, go faster, slower, etc., etc. So this is the area where I had those issues before, where I said it indicated right. And what I think I've put it down to is actually the lines on the road. So I think I've put it down to the, the arrows, that we have these big arrows, which when there's big arrows, it actually blocks the sideline here. And I think that confuses it. Welcome to Scotland. So we're now just popping into Scotland for a little bit, just to get to this charger which is only a mile away. So like here, so you see the arrow, it takes away the side. That is what is causing issues. That is what causes issues. Okay, well, 
I don't think we're gonna be able to really overtake all these cars and get in the other side in time, so I'm just gonna sit behind everybody here. I'm gonna sit nice and far behind. I'm gonna set it to max, which is seven. And auto wipers are on, so I'm just kind of intrigued to see when the auto wipers decide to go on. I definitely would have used my wipers by now, and I would have probably pressed the water button as well. But it doesn't look like it's interesting. Okay, here we go. This is our final thing of the day, which is pulling off onto this uh, Gret Gretna service station. There we go, there's the wipers. This could be interesting because of the bad weather. But let's see what it does here. For so half a mile. It's already telling us to get over into that first lane, which is what we're in. So we're in the first lane nice and early for the car. There's nobody behind us at all, okay? So I'm gonna let it do obviously what it wants here. But if it, if it doesn't do it perfectly, I'll, I'll let it carry on for a little bit. 200 yards, 100 yards. Okay, let's see how it does. It's indicated off. Yeah, it's done it fine and it's slowing us down. It's slowing us down. It's going. Okay, here we go. And now it's just trying to turn the corner. Whoa, all right. I'm not. There's still no one behind us. There's no lines though, which is why the car's struggling so much. I'm just double checking that there's no one behind us. See, it's hugging this right lane here and it's now coming to a stop, I think. Yeah, I'm just gonna wait and see. Okay, press accelerator to continue. There you go, I've pressed it. Oh, it didn't like that, now it's aborted. So I'm not sure what it didn't like there at the end, but it wasn't sure about something um, and I'm not 100% sure what that was. Let's see if we can get it to uh, do anything down here. I don't know where the superchargers are either, so this is kind of me learning. So I'm gonna set this to 19 and just see if we can get any autopilot on down here. No, it doesn't look like it wants to work. Again, it really should be able to work down here. It should keep itself here and, you know, be able to see that this is a road, but I'm surprised. Just still no lines, no working for auto. No lines, no lucky in terms of autopilot. Now, which way do I go left, I think? And... Yeah, you can see they've, they've got the new like Tesla signs everywhere. So you get this little uh, sign with a little pod point on it. And that's basically telling you which way to go to go get your car charged. Uh, and there they are over there in front of us. So that works well. Autopilot doesn't want to work down here though. Obviously. Big speed bump. Oh. And here we go at the superchargers. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video of us going through Carlisle. I'm actually going in a minute to go do Newcastle, Sunderland and Durham. So they're going to be the next like few episodes, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of doing a little bit of an up north trip. So time to go plug in, have some food, have a little bit of a nap. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget, check out Dreamcase, our sponsor. Become a patron if you want to support the channel and drive safely.